Hi everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel uh, ICS and ICS Cybersecurity. Thank you very much for your uh, respond on the last on the first video and it was amazing to be honest and I really appreciate it. Uh, if you did not subscribe yet, please subscribe and support the channel. Uh, this is the second video and it will be about uh, uh, ICS and cyber security lab setup recommendation and uh, challenges. So let us start. I hope you enjoy. Why building industrial control system uh, lab or energy automation system lab? Okay, for educational and self-development purpose, usually for educational it's provided for uh, a lab setup is available in technical college for example. Uh, for the electrical engineering uh, department, for the electronic engineering department, etc. And these lab setup are limited somehow to some few sensors and uh, to the PLC and the software programming this PLC. Now, having I haven't seen any university yet or heard of that is providing a cybersecurity training for industrial control system for the student and I really would like to know if you have any idea of any university please share it with us uh, for uh, self development purpose uh, it's one of the thing I really encourage a student or if you are working as an employee for example and you want to develop your skill and gain more knowledge in a new field to increase your possibility in the market increase your income etc uh, this is one of the good approach you can take and for building your own lab setup we will talk about it in this video later on with some uh, recommendation next one on-premise training vendor and end user etc and what I mean by on-premise training the training conducted within the company itself so let's assume I have uh, under energy sector uh, the transmission and distribution uh, plant and they have their own lab setup and they are training the engineers the operator the technical team on uh, uh, on the process on how to operate things how to run things this is one example uh, for vendor for example uh, usually uh, uh, vendors arrange some sort of training setup to uh, provide training for their client or for their employee to do the services. Third one here is automation, functionality and availability analysis and testing. And this is main one for me here. And what I mean by that here is when you adapt a new technology or, or you want to integrate some additional functions or technology within your industrial control system. Uh, let's take an example on that. Let's assume you have an industrial control system and you want to start sharing data with the uh, IT and for that you need uh, to, to use some sort of uh, collector or you want to integrate with Active Directory for example in IT which is not recommended anyhow but it's an example uh, what will happen here you need to conduct some sort of uh, functionality and availability analysis and testing to make sure this industrial control system will not be impacted about what's being done of integration uh, so this is one quick example on it then fourth one here cyber security analysis and testing and this is our main and major part here and here we have a really big challenge especially with big companies and big organization so if you if you look that to the diagram in the slide below for example where we need cyber security analysis and testing and it's a continuous process when it comes to industrial control system let's assume we have started a project x on 2019 and the system is of course new and within the system we have as a cyber security solution and I'm, I'm covering here a very basic part of cyber security solution uh, we have antivirus and we have the security patch update now till 2024 and during the update process for the signature file 
of antivirus and security patch update, for example, from Windows, uh, we are conducting continuously a compatibility test with our industrial control system, assuming HMI running on Windows 7. And this process as a compatibility test is during the lifetime of this project. Till we reach 2024, and we find out the support for the anti-malware we are using. Antivirus has been stopped by the vendor and we have to go and upgrade to a new version. So here we have a challenge where we need to conduct a test on the new release and we confirm if it is compatible with our product or we could call it a proof of concept. So this is an example on cybersecurity analysis and testing. And this is a simple one because it's get more complicated when we start talking about next generation firewall, we, we start talking about intrusion detection system, where does it fit and how it does work. Another thing on cybersecurity analysis and testing and automation functionality and availability analysis and testing, I would like to highlight here that these two points, if you want to build a lab for it, you look at it in a different way when you deal with end user or client or when you deal with vendor. And if you are a system integrator or cybersecurity company providing services or solution, the way you need to make your lab setup is different. It's not the same. Okay, for the next slide on general recommendation on lab setup, the recommendation here for personal level and those who are seeking uh, experience to learn PLC programming, for example. Uh, I don't recommend uh, what I'm saying in this slide for a uh, real industrial control system or for any, for any lab setup for uh, companies here. It's only for individual. Let's start with uh, the point number one. Uh, in point number one, usually, and point number two, you will need to have a PLC, and here I recommend you to have a second-hand PLC. Don't go and buy a new brand because the price will be much cheaper. And you need to make sure you have also the PLC software from which you configure the PLC and test your program. Some PLC software equipped with a simulation uh, application uh, that help you simulate what you have programmed and some of it even have a PID simulator and uh, you might not even need to have a PLC uh, if you have the simulator. So this is an uh, important point I would like to highlight here. Uh, in addition to that, make sure the PLC can communicate with TCP IP with the PC avoid buying a PLC that supports, for example, Profipass or MPI protocol, because here you will end up buying also a new communication cable or buying a converter from MPI to TCP, and the price will be much more expensive on you. So you need to avoid uh, that one. Uh, another thing you might be interested on having a conveyor belt to uh, test your program and play with it. Here you need to select which vendor you will buy from. For example, Fisher Technique have several nice uh, products and uh, it's one uh, choice. And there are other manufacturers in the market who do the same thing. Uh, this is for a simple setup, a PLC with the program and you are testing that. Now, I don't recommend uh, installing PLC program or HMI program in uh, your main host or your, in your main laptop. Even if they support the operating system, it's totally not recommended. Usually these software are very heavy and it will affect your device performance. So go to the choice where you can have a virtual machine and if you can have a virtual machine, one for PLC software, one for HMI software, some PLC software also have the HMI application within it, uh, it that will be the best practice in my opinion. You don't have to buy a virtual machine software. You can use VirtualBox. It's free of, of charge. And uh, this is another recommendation uh, here. Now, if you want to deploy cybersecurity setup 
uh, installation software, uh, you want to test it, you want, want to anal analyze it, you will have a lot of limitation here. This setup I'm sharing with you here is the simplest setup you can have for your lab. You can conduct some cybersecurity analysis on it, some cybersecurity test. Uh, you will have a lot of limitation for sure because what we have in reality is, uh, is uh, huge compared to what you have in the lab setup. Okay, in the next slide here we have uh, the end user and there are several major points the end user need to focus on I highlight the most important one in my opinion first one first is the process what process you are running if you are in oil and gas uh, or petrochemical it's different than if you are in pharmaceutical business or if you are in uh, uh, food and beverage uh, business. Each one of these has its own requirement. The process is running in a different way. So first one is process here. Then we have what hardware and software are used within this uh, process. Uh, after that, we have the communication protocols are being used. And this one is a big challenge. We have a uh, communication protocol like ProfiPass, ProfiNet, uh, ASI, what else, uh, Modbus, etc. And you need to know what communication protocol you have when you start, when you start uh, building a lab and which one you really need to consider, which one you want to get right off. Uh, then we have uh, the last point here the current and future uh, need when you build a lab it's very important to consider your current need as well as your future need because for example if you are building a new product line for the future or you want to add a new extension to your existing project and assuming after one year you will integrate with IT so you need to adapt this to your uh, lab setup